Hello everyone, this is Reza. Welcome to the final part of this series. Now in this video, I am going to introduce an alternative to what we talked about in the previous video. So in the previous video, we talked about the blend shape and how we can use this deformer to our advantage and how we can mix that with our current controllers that we have on the model. But around 2016, uh, Autodesk introduced a tool, an animation editor tool that allows us to use a blend shape within the tool. Now, if I go to Windows, and then animation editor, we have a tool called shape editor. Now this is a great tool and I wouldn't actually use that as an alternative. I would use that as my first preference. The reason for that is it allows you not to create target objects, but use your base object as your target object. In other words, you don't need to duplicate your model to create your blend shapes. As you can see, this tool already recognized all of these blend shapes that you have on the skin. So if I go to blend shape, all of the blend shapes that you see, you see here. The beauty of it is you can actually double click and rename them. And you can see the channels are yellow, meaning that it, this has been connected to these attributes via connection editor. Now, why we use blend shape deformers then? One example would be to take the duplicated object into a sculpting application and sculpt it carefully, bring it back as an OBJ or FBX and attach that to your base object. This is one strong motivation for artists to still use blend shape deformers because they just want to have that level of polish and accuracy. Obviously, when you take a model into a sculpting application, you have a lot of freedom over the pose or the posture of the model because you have all of a sudden 50 brushes rather than just a soft select tool. But if you wish to stay inside Maya and do everything from scratch and, you know, pose your model within the application, I would suggest to use shape editor rather than a, a blend shape deformer. Now, how to make use of this window? You can add your expression through this tool within the existing blend shape one container or you can create a brand new container if you just click on create blend shape you get an error you can see it says that well although i'm about to create a container i need to know what base object you have so you do need to select this base object and only then create a blend shape that way. Now this blend shape by itself does nothing because you still need to add a target. It defines your base object and then you define your target object. But if you wish to add your blend shape to the existing container, you don't obviously need to do that step. You right click, delete here. You just add target with the model selected. Now, why to have two separated or two different blend shape containers? Well, you may want to know for which one you have a separate target object and for which expression you have base object and target object as one model. That allows you to be a little bit more organized for lack of better word. So I tend to keep them separate. For the first one, I'm just going to rename it Expressions Deformer. So I know the blend shapes are applied through this Deformer tool. Now with the model selected, I'm going to create a new blend shape and I'm going to call this 
expressions underscore shape editor. Now I know whatever expression I come up with, I do not have any copy of the face to tweak. Now it's time to bring in the target object with the model selected and with the container selected, I'm just going to go add target. Now it creates a blend shape deformer for me and that's going to be my target. The value set to one represents the change and if I set it to zero, it should bring everything back to the default pose or deactivate this blend shape for lack of better word. When you make changes or create your expression, you need to make sure that this edit button is enabled. I'm going to go to show, hide the joints, zoom in, and now I start changing a few things. I'm going to activate my soft select tool, select the move tool, make changes. You know, I'm going to be fairly quick with this really. The idea is not to make the perfect expression, but rather to show you the workflow. Let's say that's the result I want, right? Short and sweet. Now the beauty of this is first things first, Maya will sort out the input order so you can see if I zoom back, still all the controllers are working, which is fantastic. But also it allows you to basically work on the same model without worrying about another file or another object on the side. Fantastic. Once you're done, you can turn off the edit and now you can see you have the expression. I can go ahead and say, I'm going to call this unhappy for lack of a better word. Now we get the pose done. Let's see how we can add that to our existing expression controller. The steps are pretty much identical. You just go into modify, add attribute, and you call this one unhappy, minimum of zero, maximum of one, and you go okay. Once you have the attribute, it's as simple as is bringing the general editor connection editor. I have the unhappy attribute here. I can select the skin, bring the expression shape editor and you can see naming it allows you to find it really quickly. Reload it to right and go to wait and just plug or link unhappy to unhappy wait and pretty much done. So if I go back to my controller, you can see unhappy zero is default one and we get the pose. That's fantastic. So with that out of the way, you have another tool at your disposal to choose from in a nutshell. If you do not wish to take your target object to a sculpting application for extra level of polish, if you wish to do all of your expressions inside Maya from A to Z, I would highly recommend using Shape Editor as a strong alternative to blend shape deformers. That allows you to add folders, to be super organized. Now to clean ups, it's really easy. You need to make sure if I bring the um, joints back, you need to make sure that your object is referenced. So no one is going to touch the object by accident. Of course, if I go to the global skeleton, you want to turn the visibility off. And if you have any locators or clusters enabled, you can easily go to show and set everything to none and then only bring back your polygon and NURBS curves. With that, you're 100% certain that no one's going to pick anything by accident or change anything by accident. That's pretty much it. That should cover everything for 
facial rigging for beginners needless to say a lot can be added to this rig or there are many more tools to talk about and to discover to give this rig extra level of functionality and control but for beginner level i hope this gives you a really good starting point so you guys can kind of add layers of knowledge to what you already know and take this rig to the next level. I'm going to provide more intermediate and advanced tips about facial rigging in the close future. So keep an eye on the channel and stay tuned. Thank you again for all of your support and love. And until the next course, see you around.